So, which which number knife am I on to now? Knife one, so. You're still on one, yeah. <laughs> so we've got a long way to go. Oh, but don't forget, you're doing number one under my garden, so I won't be that crap. <laughs> So now we've got our pins, glue's gone nice and hard. So what we've got to do first is take off these excess pieces of pinning material till it's flat with this surface. Then we can take that flat surface, put it on the table here, and we can profile the edge of the scale material down to the profile of the blade. It's quite easy. That's the same way as flattening the sides of anything. Keep your fingers on the corners and do a little bit at a time. Only grind for two or three seconds on each side because being a small pin, it generates a lot of heat and we don't want to get it too hot, otherwise it's going to burn the epoxy and make it look horrible. And you notice I'm leaving it in the water for quite a while. It's only got that end of the pin to soak the heat out. So the cold water will pull the heat out and then we'll take off a little bit more. You've now got a knife handle sitting there and you've got two scales sitting on the outside. So the top of the handle, those corners, we just want to round them off a little bit. You've got your pins coming through here. The bottom half of the handle, we want to reduce the thickness of the scale to about half in a taper from about the top of the pins. We want to remove that bit off the side. So all I'm going to do is just guess where the middle of that scale is and just put a little mark on there with my pen so I can see but when I get there, I know I'm at the halfway mark. Now I'm only marking it on these two tips here. I'll explain now, because obviously as you're cutting at an angle like that with the belt, the highest points are gonna be removed first and the lower points here, they're gonna be left a bit thicker. The angle that is just getting down to those two pen marks as on the side here is getting towards the top of those pins. So I'm using eyes to line up here. So I can, I can watch my two marks that are on the inside. I'll do it this way around so you can see, you can see those two marks. And I'm looking down, holding the blade so I've got it parallel to the uh, belt. Just put him on flat. And now I'm going to turn it slightly, put a bit of pressure on. You can see I've got a grind line which is roughly almost to the bottom of the pins. It's not quite so much at the back. And it's halfway down to that mark that I made originally. So this time I'm going to put a bit more pressure at the bottom. And I want to get that grind line coming up evenly so that when it gets to the top of the pins, I'm down to those two marks here. Get that new bit, bit more pressure at the bottom. So now it's just touching that pin. It's almost up to the bottom of that pin. Halfway through that pin to the bottom of that pin, getting to the marks. Now I'm closer to the mark there, so I'm gonna have to push in a bit more at the bottom there. No, so it's about right, it's not too bad, it's not critical. There, I'm now evenly halfway through my pins all the way along. I'm almost at the mark. So this time I'm gonna put a bit more pressure on the top here. That'll just bring that ground line up to the top of the pins without me going too deep through that side uh, at the bottom. See, by looking at the front here, I can see my angles coming down the side. I'll be able to see the radius at the top when I do that. Very gently, because I'm just grinding off that corner. Radius in round. If you look at the end, you can see where I'm getting that radius coming in. You can see the radius running down. By the time I get to here, it peters out to nothing. So this time, I'm going to pull the top of the blade out of it, and then that will allow me to grind a bit further down and get that radius in a bit further down. So now I've got the radius here. So you can see at the back, I'm still not getting very far. I'm getting a nice radius all the way down. So this time, I'm going to pull it out even further. Work at the back. So 
there. You can see the top radius coming down. You see the bottom bevel coming up. Same at the front. Top radius, bottom bevel. So now I'm just going to blend those two into each other. And if you can hear the noise, that scraping noise is where it's starting to pick up on the pins. So now I've got a fairly good radius all the way down. It feels nice and smooth going around the corner. Hand sanding will finish that off. I'm not going to radius this edge, I will hand sand that. But again, if you look at the back, you can see we're getting a fairly nice profile. And then I will grind the other side exactly the same. Now all you're going to do, Vince, is exactly the same. No pressure. So now we've finished all the machine sanding. All we've got to do now is just get a nice finish on here, put a bit of um, T-coil on there, just to make the wood protected and uh, everything look nice. What we're going to start with, so on this bottom edge, we haven't done any rounding on the side of the handle scales. So we're going to round that section off first. So we've got lots of different grades of paper. This is ordinary sandpaper, wet and dry paper, depending what grade we're at. So we're going to start with 220 because we've been sanding around there on the belt sander down to 180 grit. So we'll start with a 220. All I'm going to do is just fold the end over a bit and use that. And I'm going to start rounding off that bottom edge. It doesn't need to be hugely rounded off. You can also rub your paper a little bit over the edge. It works a little bit quicker. And as soon as the paper clogs up, just fold it back another half an inch so you've got a fresh piece of paper. Otherwise, you're rubbing away with clogged up paper. Now, where we've had this on the belt grinder, where the bronze pins are, we want to get a nice finish on there. And all this, the wide to grit scratches are running down straight down the blade. So when we to clean up the pins, well, I'm going to rub across, put the pressure over the pin. I'm just rubbing across the top of the pin at 45 degrees. I can clearly see the 180 grit scratches running straight up and down. And I'm just going far enough until they're removed. And as soon as I've done that, I will stop and then just quickly go over the rest of the handle with the 220 grit paper. So working with the 220 grit paper, you know, you're not removing enough material to do any serious shaping. If you do find, as you now run your finger over, serious lumps and bumps, then you're going to just stop and perhaps go down to a 120 grit paper, just smooth it off and then go back to your 220. We're trying to get the shape how we want it, down to a 220 grit finish all over. The thing you'll find as well, Vince, is once you get down to your 400 paper, it will clog up a lot quicker. Again, keep moving back. Don't try and use a piece that you've already used before. Just get a fresh piece. Cutting these 20 mil strips out, you get, I think, 14 strips out of one sheet of paper. Per strip costs you nothing. And because you keep folding it back, you get like almost 100% usage out of it. Or a very low cost way of keeping nice fresh abrasive paper on the job. Because the other thing is when you're working on your bench at home, it's also very nice to have a desk lamp on the bench so you can now put it under. Fortunately I've got your lovely lights here today so I can just hold it and I'll just keep turning and twisting until I get the reflection off the surface. And quite often you can see little areas where there's some scratches on there. Just helps to get them off. But I say a desk lamp, a little arm desk lamp on the bench does the job just as well. Just a very quick shout out to our sponsors. We've got Clark Knives who do the heat treatment for knife makers and sell the ready to grind Damascus billets. Multi-tool products who do the 84 engineering belt grinders and GFS Knife Supplies. They are a small family run business, which is a one-stop shop for all your knife making needs. They do the abrasive belts, carbon steels and knife handle materials for knife making, some quenching oils and the rock blade heat kills. Please click the links in the description below because they help us in making more videos like this. So you've finished all your sanding. All we've got to do left on the knives now is just to finish the side. Remember we only uh, ground the sides of the blades down to 80 grit. That's because we knew we were going to be handling and bashing around and putting the handles on. My handle is finished, so I've just wrapped some masking tape around it. 
We're just going to put a final swipe down each side now with a 180 grit, get a nice finish on it. Just break the burrs on the corner, on the edges there, sharpen it, and we're finished. That's two good knives. So all we've got to do now is, that one is finished. This one just needs to take the paper off and we'll just put a teak oil onto the handle. Okay. Brush off any dirt. There's nothing special about teak oil. I think it's just a bit of tongue oil and white spirit. It comes in quite nicely. But on the paper towel, now you can suddenly see that piece of oak you had on there, Vince, is absolutely beautiful. Just take the excess off. But there you are, Vince. Your very own knife, beautifully made.